Hi Long Range Hunting, today we're going to be talking about one of the most misunderstood parts of hunting and it's also one of the most important and that's terminal ballistics. Now, what is terminal ballistics, you might ask? Well, terminal ballistics is what happens inside the animal with the bullet. You have three ballistics. You have internal ballistics, which is what happens inside the barrel. You have external ballistics, which is what happens as that bullet goes through the air, wind, drop, etc. And you have terminal ballistic, and that again is terminal, it's at the end. That's what happens when that bullet passes through that animal, and that is what's gonna dictate a quick clean kill or not. And that really comes down to bullet selection. Now the terminal ballistic section is such a large section of what we're going to be covering. And so we're going to actually break it down into multiple videos for you to make it easier to watch and understand. Now, let's talk about things that don't matter because there's a lot of misconceptions out there. Again, it's one of the most misunderstood parts of hunting and that is animal weight. Weight is irrelevant when it comes to terminal ballistics. It really is. You're not shooting, you know, one of the most common things I hear is, well, this would work on a 200 pound whitetail, but it won't work on an 800 pound elk. Well, here's the thing. You're not shooting 800 pounds. You're not shooting a block of clay. You are shooting a section of an 800 pound animal. But the weight itself is irrelevant. What does matter is your depth of penetration. That's how far that bullet needs to go through. Uh, expansion, velocity, impact resistance is all gonna play a factor in that. Now getting into several of those, impact resistance, what is it? That is the impact resistance that it meets, the resistance it meets, and the more resistance, the more that bullet is going to expand. There's a really good video out there by Lucky Gunner, and it has an interview with a couple guys at Federal who do ballistics for a living. And they were both asked at one point, what's the one thing that you wish people understood about terminal ballistics? And both their answers were the same. We wish people understood that energy doesn't matter as much as people think, and bullet construction and how it performs is what dictates terminal ballistics. Now, one thing that people get onto when, again, it's the bullet that you need is the cartridge itself. Now, the cartridges, they don't matter. What is pushing this projectile out really doesn't matter besides the velocity it can attain as far as terminal ballistics. Now, only the bullet is leaving. The bullet is what matters. The bullet is what's gonna dictate how it flies by its BC, which is its ballistic coefficient, which is a numerical number showing how well it transitions through the different layers of air environmental conditions, how well it's going to fly. The higher it is, the better it's gonna be. The lower it is, the worse it's going to be. Now let's talk bullet construction. Now bullet construction is very vital for terminal ballistics. That is what's going to cause that bullet to perform based on, again, impact resistance, velocity, et cetera, animal anatomy. And so we've got two examples here. One is in a 270 and it's a typical hunting bonded bullet, um, thick jacket, round nose. It's designed for expansion. Uh, with a higher impact resistance. Now the other one we now the other one we have here is an ELD match, and that's one I use all the time. Actually, that's around for this gun itself, um, but it's more aerodynamic. It's got a nice ballistic tip, which helps with expansion, and it's got a lower impact velocity that's required. Now the typical hunting bullet, like what's used in this 270, requires a minimum of 2,200 feet per second. If not, it won't open up. Now I see a lot of problems with that and people tend to blame everything except for themselves, mainly the cartridge, when in fact it's their bullet choice that did not work for them. I was talking with a couple of good buddies up in Canada, those guys hunt bears and they kill more than anybody else I know. And we were talking about this exact thing and a lot of people overanalyze and don't really understand anatomy and they get poor results. I see a lot of people going with massive, massive calibers for bears, which again, isn't a bad thing. I understand a wounded bear is a bad idea. 
However, the bullet choices they're going with are actually counterproductive. The reason being is bears really have a low impact resistance. And these guys both have, since switching to a match bolt like the ELD match, have gotten much better results. <clears throat> the reason being is a lot of people don't realize the bear's anatomy, it's not a very tough hide. It's a very fatty animal and the meat is a lot leaner than what people think. Um, so you're not meeting a whole lot of impact resistance and it's a very greasy meat. It's almost like adding lube. And so what happens is they use a typical bonded bullet that needs a very high impact resistance and impact velocity and they're not getting full performance. They think, oh, it's a big tough bear. Well, yeah, are they tough animals? Sure, are they dangerous? Yes. However, you're not meeting the necessary impact resistance for that bullet to give you that proper performance. Now, something that will expand under a lot less, like the ELD match, especially high velocity, is going to open up massively, giving you a great energy dump and putting that bear down quickly. So you, even with a smaller cartridge and bullet, are going to be much more effective than the wrong bullet in a huge caliber that, again, most people can't handle. So again, it's there's a lot of misconceptions. A lot of people don't understand anatomy. Again, most people don't take a lot of animals apart or even study them. Um, that's something we do in the group is we document, we take pictures. You'll see a little bit of that, but again, it's YouTube, so I can't go too crazy with some of these gory pictures. Now again, bullets are different. Each one is constructed a little different. The standard bullet for, hunt, for hunting purposes is a minimum of 2,200 feet per second. There are some mediums where people have tried to go in between like ELDX, which is a match hunting bullet, and it goes down to about 1,800 feet per second. The problem with those is they're not as aerodynamic. And accuracy is everything. Everybody talks about shot placement. Well, that's great. However, if you look at that round nose bullet, that's not very aerodynamic. It doesn't have a higher BC. And so that bullet will cause more resistance flying through the air, which means it's going to slow down faster. It's going to hit trans and subsonic flight faster. And most of those bullets don't handle that transition. We did some testing a few years ago, 200 rounds of each out to different distances <clears throat> with the same gun, a match 308, a custom gun running ELD match against standard hunting bullets. And the problem was, is those bullets not only had more wind, they had more arc, but they were also impacting sideways at 500 yards. At 500 yards, they had completely destabilized and we were shooting those political metal posts you stick in the ground so we could really see what it was doing. The regular match bullets were just leaving a hole. They were blowing right through. They were still flying true. They still had stability, but none of the typical hunting bullets would even keep stable at that point. And it was just like lobbing rounds at that point. <clears throat> so. Here's the thing, I get a lot of guys that I hear say, oh, well, if you pick a good hunting bullet, it'll go perfectly through the entire range you want to shoot. That's not true at all. That's terrible advice, please stop saying that. That bullet is, and that advice is a big reason I see guys that say, well, I've made shots at that distance and I know it's unethical because it just wounded the animal or I didn't get it and I hit it dead on. Well, here's the thing, if you're taking that bullet one, beyond that minimum impact resistance, you're not getting good performance. Those bullets, again, even at 500 yards with a 308, they were already destabilizing. We weren't getting that with the 308 until around 1250 with the 168 grain bullet. So it's one of those things. And even then we weren't getting sideways impacts. It was just kind of, we were getting flyers. Um, so it's one of those things that they're shooting that distance, sure. They'll go out, they'll shoot an animal, and yes, they hit it. What the problem is, is that bullet is not hitting true. It's either hitting sideways, and if you take something like a pin, that bullet to, is going to impact, and it's going to expand. That's what you want. And it's designed to expand straight down. Now, if that bullet is hitting sideways, it one, it's not going to be able to penetrate as well, but it's really just hurting the animal. You're not gonna get penetration. At most, it's just gonna bow it. It's not going to deform like it needs to. And so the problem is they say, oh, I've made shots of that. Well, here's the thing. Their lack of knowledge made them take an unethical shot. 
The cartridge itself is capable. The bullet they chose is not. And so, yes, I've seen several instances where guys verified hit them, but once either recovered or shot again, we found out that they were not getting true impacts, as I call it, because again, it's coming in at an angle and hitting sideways. And so they'll try to base it off that and blame the cartridge or the bullet and say, oh, it's not big enough bullet. It's, you know, the cartridge isn't capable. Well, that's not true at all. Their lack of knowledge is what led to that. So pick the right bullet a lot. And you got to understand those bullets, <clears throat> the quote unquote hunting bullets were designed specifically for expansion. They're designed for close range. They're not really designed for long range. Um, you do get some like the LDX, but again, the LDX, the way it's shaped, it's not as aerodynamic as the match. Now it's the same core, the same tip and the same jacket between the ELD match and the LDX. However, the ELDX has a lock ring in there to help with not over expanding. Um, and the shape is different. <clears throat> so it's not as aerodynamic. There's more weight forward, um, basically almost looks like a fatter tip. Well, what's happening with that is because it's not as aerodynamic, it loses that stability. And again, like the round nose, it's going to bleed faster. So you're not gonna get the exact same performance. So testing with both the Burgers, <clears throat> ELDX and ELD Match, I test them in multiple calibers over a couple months out to a mile to get transonic, subsonic flight to check how those bullets transitioned for one and how they flew, what their <clears throat> limits were and on accuracy. The ELD match performed better than the other two. It outperformed the X drastically. And here's the thing. Now, the X has a thicker jacket. And again, even with jackets, we're not talking astronomical amounts. I mean, it's it's something you can barely tell, but the it's tapered on the X. <clears throat> And so it, because of that and the thickness of the jacket, it needs more expansion. Now the ELD match is a thin jacket. It's non-bonded and it will expand much better and much easier giving you a larger temporary wound cavity and more of an energy dump. So it actually outperformed in every facet, including terminal ballistics. Now I wanna cover this real quick. Marketing, marketing, marketing. Marketing, don't pay attention to it. Use some common sense. Marketing is simply a tool. They're going to tell you what they have to to sell a product. I use Scopes as an example of this. I just actually had this discussion a couple of days ago with multiple people, and it's one of those things that they say, oh, well, you know, the tactical is for the tactical shooting, the tactical scopes. A hunting scope will perform much better in all areas, which, just like they say with the hunting bullets, is not true. A typical hunting scope isn't designed for a lot of adjustment. Most of them are designed for ranges where you have point of aim, point of impact, max point blank range. And what max point blank range is, if you're aiming straight on that size of animal, where, how far you can shoot before that bullet drops and it's outside the vitals. So it's basically how far you can shoot before you need to do any adjustment. That's what a lot of people's hunting is. And that's what most hunting scopes are. A lot of times they have, you know, capped turrets to where if you want to adjust it, you actually have to open it. And they generally have a standard duplex reticle or a BDC. I'm not a fan of ballistic turrets or reticles. <clears throat> the reason being is they are set up for one cartridge and one load. The only way to really be accurate with that is to have multiple turrets made. And even then, it's not as refined as other methods. So if you get a bullet drop compensating scope and you have that tur custom turret made, well, you're going to have to carry a bag of turrets. You're going to have to find the one nearest to where you're at as far as environmental conditions, elevation, everything, and then pop it on. The problem with it being two is if you switch ammunitions, you switch loads, or even different guns, it's going to change drastically if you get another cartridge. And so let's say your scope goes down or somebody else's scope down, you can't pull that scope and pop it on there um, or even throw it on your other gun unless it's running the same load. If something happens to your ammunition, again, you're out of luck. That scope has become a paperweight. Um, I've used some of the top ones, you know, I went through Badlands the first time through the basic sniper, 
I used a Leopold Mark IV M3 and out past 400 yards, that was completely off. So it's one of those things that it's good in theory. There are some decent systems out there like Best of the West. Um, but again, I'll never run one. Is That's the most accurate way to do it as far as if you want to do BDCs is the multiple turrets. But again, I don't want to carry around a bag full of turrets and I don't want to just be close. Now, if you take a mill or MOA scope, like again, the tactical ones as they're marketed, it doesn't matter what cartridge, it doesn't matter what gun or anything. I can pop this scope on 50 different guns, true my ballistics and be good to go. Because again, it's the same adjustments. If I put it into my ballistic calculator and <clears throat> it tells me I need five mils of adjustment, I dial five mils. If I throw it on another gun and another cartridge and bullet, and it tells me now I need 4.8, guess what, I just dial 4.8. It's universal, I can pop it on anything, and it's going to work, and it's gonna be deadly accurate. It's gonna be going exactly with my true data. So, as far as, again, take personal preferences aside. I have my personal preferences, everybody does. If you look at performance and how universal it is to adapt, it's like Top Shot. The Top Shot competition, they didn't look for somebody that was done good in one area. They wanted somebody who could master everything and do everything. And that's basically what these are. But in the competition world, the sniping world, where these are really designed for these tactical scopes, they need to perform at an incredibly high level. Most hunting scopes won't track correctly, meaning if I adjust five, it's going to move it five mils. Most hunting scopes don't. You can sit there and spin that turret and only get three inches. So it's one of those things that you get correct tracking, which means accuracy. You get good quality glass, the best glass, because you gotta be able to see. And the reticle options are much, much better. You can get stuff like a Horus reticle um, or a milling reticle, where you can actually use that for precise and accurate holds. I have a Horus, which is what some people call a Christmas tree. It's got lines going out for both windage and elevation. And what that can do is I can make a shot just the same as dialing. It's the same thing, measured increments. And if I have a mid-range shot, I don't even have to touch the dials. I can throw up, go to my exact hold that I need for both wind and elevation and make a quick, clean shot. So the scopes like this are more universal. They're going to outperform in every facet the typical hunting scopes. And here's the thing too, you know, again, those hunting scopes are made for closer range stuff. You can use this for close range. You can use it for long range. You can use it for all kinds of stuff and it adapts to everything and is usable and it's accurate. Whereas a hunting scope cannot keep up with all those different areas. Now, bullets are the same thing. Now, again, I'm not basing this off opinions. It's based on actual fact, field results. The three best bullets for quote unquote hunting is ELD match, the Sierra tipped match king, and the burger hybrids. Out of all the results that we get all the time from hunting season, seeing pictures, bolts expanding, videos, everything, the ELD match has shown that it is the best as far as not only its versatility, but the performance on animals. So just like the scope, it can do all of it. Now a typical hunting bullet, again, 2200 feet per second, that really limits your range. It's not gonna fly as well. It limits what you can do you can't take a hunting bullet and go down to 1,700 feet per second if it's a minimum of 22 and get it to perform. However, if you have an ELD match that'll expand down to 1,300 feet per second and you're at 2,200 feet per second, guess what? You're gonna get performance. You're at 3,000 feet per second, you're gonna get performance. It, that bullet will, even though it's not marketed for hunting, will do that across the board, therefore making it better versus a hunting bullet which has their limitations and is not nearly as accurate. And again, accuracy is everything. Shot placement, shot placement, shot placement. I'll preach it all day and it's very true. Again, a recap, marketing is marketing. Just because something is marketed for one thing and it's after that demographic does not mean that it's not effective or that it won't outperform something else. Match bullets are not marketed because of military contracts who are not allowed to use quote unquote hunting bullets or expanding bullets. Now, another thing I hear all the time as far as relations to bullets is especially match bullets, they say, oh, well, they fragment and come apart at close range. Now with fragmentation, 
people have the misconception that it's that bullet is just crumbling like a graham cracker. It just dissolves into dust, and that's not true. What's actually happening is that bullet is hitting with such a high impact resistance and velocity that it's expanding so far that it actually reaches the end of that bullet and comes out. And so you're actually getting molt, you're not only getting full opening, the maximum amount of expansion, and then those last pieces are fragmenting through like a shotgun blast. You're getting multiple sharp projectiles going through that animal. So it's not a bad thing. You're getting a full energy dump, the most potential you can get. And so it's one of those things that fragmentation isn't bad. There's actually bullets like the burgers that are designed to fragment because of how effective it is. So, you know, just because a bullet fragments at close range, as long as it's getting into that vital, it's still a lethal shot.